We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Let us pray. Lord, except you help us, we have no power of our own to help ourselves. Spirit of the Lord, if you dwell in us, you will move us to do what is right always in your sight. We therefore ask you that it is one and only chance to pass through this earth. Help us to do what is right. So that when the day of trouble comes, we will be at peace with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Be seated. So today we are talking about the great day of the Lord. The great day of the Lord. That is our topic today. And the text is from Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1, beginning the reading from verse 14. Zephaniah 1, 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasted greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. A day of wasteness and desolation. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. And their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as a dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. This is the word of the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, one following, makes us to understand that there is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heaven. There was a day that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost came down and discovered that the earth was void, full of darkness. It was shapeless. The Spirit of God inspected the world and discovered that it was chaotic. And from then, the Lord started the work of creation. That was the birth of this new earth we live in today. And this earth, so long as it was born one day, this earth will come to an end one day. Everything that has a beginning must have an end. The day of death is more important than the day of birth. A lot of times we celebrate our birthdays without remembering our death days. And we tell ourselves in a way of suiting our hearts that I am plus one today. But when I sat down and looked at it very well, I discovered that it is minus one. For somebody who has 120 years, if that person lives um, for 100 years, that means, is it plus 100 or minus 100? It is minus 100. So our brother, uh, Reverend, Christian Umokoro, that is celebrating his birthday today, you are minus one. 
Yes. Whenever people write congratulations, I am plus one today, please remind them that you are drawing nearer, even as others are drawing nearer. That is the truth. It is minus one. And where we are going is more important than where we are coming from. Each time I see a casket, even on Friday here, I saw a casket, we had a funeral in this church, and I looked at the casket and I reminded myself, Hosanna, you will lie like this one day. You, be careful. You, Hosanna, you will lie like this one day. Hebrew 9, 27. It is appointed unto men to die how many times? And after that, what happens? It will be the day of judgment. And that is what we are talking about today. The great day of the Lord. Why is this day coming? This day is coming because the arch enemy of God, Satan, the devil, the ancient serpent, there is a day he will be judged. There is a day that his angels will be judged. There is a day also that as many humans that connive with him to destroy this earth, a day is coming that they will be judged. The kingdom of God must surely be established fully in this world. The kingdom of God is already here. That is the church, the extension of the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are already in the kingdom of God. But a time is coming when evil shall be totally removed and the kingdom of God will be established fully in this place from everlasting to everlasting. There will be no more sin. There will be no more Satan. There will be no more evil people. There will be no more distress. There will be no more rain, no more sun. There will be no more kidnapping. And all the vices in the society will be off because death and hell will be imprisoned forever. That day of the Lord is a day of wrath. It is a day of trouble and distress. It is a day that both men and women are going to experience birth pain. Birth pain. Birth pain is progressive until the expulsion of the baby, the pains don't reduce. They go up and up and up. And the higher the pain, the nearer the baby. Both men and women are going to experience birth pain that day. And these pains will not be physical pains. It will be a day that people will meet mountains and tell mountains, please fall on me. Can I get a place to hide myself? It is going to be a day that people are going to discover that the whole of their money the whole of the gold they have heaped for themselves are useless. It is going to be a day that people who just got married will look at their beautiful wives and discover that all the travel to Lagos, to Kaduna, to see one family member and everything has become useless. It is going to be a day that people will hold their certificates even some women who gave their bodies to lecturers so that they can be awarded marks. It's going to be a day that they will have their certificates but discovered that this certificate is totally useless. I remember the first day I had a rapture dream, early 2000. Uh, I was, we were walking on the road, it was a third road, me and some fellow choristers. So there was a great bright light from behind, and I was trying to turn myself, turn my neck to look at the light, but I couldn't turn my neck. And I was, I was trying, trying to force my neck. I discovered that my colleagues raptured, left the ground, but I couldn't rapture. And I was running, I ran into a hall, and when I entered the hall, I saw a big man before I got there, he commanded his talks. You understand? If you're in Nigeria, you must understand what we mean by talks. Eh? Talks. 
He commanded his dogs and they carried him on top of a table, lifted his legs from the ground so that he could rapture. But immediately I got there, he was so disappointed that he could not rapture. So he was commanding them, drop me down, drop me down, drop me down now. They were trying to carry him and drop him down. Even in that position, in that chaotic state, slaves were still serving their masters. Me, I flew through the window. It was very, very chaotic. And we were running. How many of us saw the crisis in worry? How many of us saw the crisis? How was it? Do you want another one? Can you pray for another one? It is not going to be a crisis. It is going to be the owner of the house coming back to his house. The one that gives us rain. The God that gives us the sun. The one that protects our lives. The one that gives us resources. That one is coming back. The owner, the landlord, the bishop of our soul is coming back to take possession of his world. Today, Nigeria has been held captive. And it never started today. It started many years ago. We have been having recession for so many years ago. A time is coming that God is coming for the leadership of this country. I know. A lot of times I say Nigerians should not go to hell. Because we are already experiencing hell on earth. Whether you have money or not, I tell you, we are in an earthly hell. Do you have peace with all your money? Eh? Can you wear your khaki and jog in the streets of worry 5 a.m. and enjoy breeze as other people do in their quiet countries? Can we do it here? A time is coming when God will come and call all those who are stealing the money to book. He will bring everybody to book. Angels are in this world and they are writing. Those of us in our little corners who blame the government, who blame politicians. But our rukuruku is everywhere. I told one aboki man. I said, you are selling honorary sugar cane and you are shitting me. By the time you become a governor, overnight you will sell us and bring the receipt. So why will you move forward? In our little corner, God is coming for us if we do not change. A lot of times people don't like messages like this. They want to hear that message that we make them to scream amen. That we made them to shout entertainment. That is what people want to hear. The ears of many Christians have been programmed to listen to lies. Uh, one Steve, uh, they forwarded a video to me yesterday on WhatsApp. And a woman asked him, it's a reality show. Why is it that men like to tell lies too much? Why? And Steve said, Yes, men like to tell lies because women don't want to hear the truth. If you tell them your dressing is not good, they become offended. If you tell them that uh, you are this, they become offended. So if they tell you, how do I look? You tell them, you look very nice. You look take away. That, that is what they have been programmed to hear. That is his own opinion. His opinion is not my own. But why do I have to refer to that? A lot of Christians today have been programmed to listen to lies. They don't want anything that will uh, make their hearts to shake. May the Lord deliver his church in the name of Jesus. The Episode we read, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 says, For when they shall say, for when people shall come to us 
and tell us peace and safety. When they shall tell us nothing will happen to us, you have once confessed Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are saved. When they shall come with these words and make us feel comfortable in our sins, then suddenly destruction will come upon them and travail upon a woman, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The day of judgment is going to be very, very terrible. It is a day that people will want another chance. Like the rich man who was in the torment, everlasting torment of hell. And he said, please, Father Abraham, just send one of these, your servants, to dip his finger in water to come and cool my tongue. He was looking for another chance. He was looking for something that could ameliorate his pains, but there was no other chance. We are alive today. Let us do our best, our very best, to do the will of God. I know what is coming ahead of us. It is not sweet. It is going to be very, very terrible. If God himself could turn his back on Jesus on the cross, when Jesus was carrying the whole sin of mankind upon him, do you remember Jesus cried? Eh? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That means Jesus was forsaken. It's scriptural. It means why was he forsaken? It's not because he was not loved. It's not because Jesus committed sin, but he was made sin for us. By the time he took his blood as the lamb of sacrifice and entered the holy of holies, the highest altar so far, and sprinkled his blood so a peace God, and he was found with sin, not that he is a sinner, God turned away his face. So nobody should deceive us that you can carry other people's women and we go to heaven. If God did not allow Satan to remain in heaven, Lucifer, if he did not allow him to remain in heaven, his angels, listen, Lucifer was created with precious stones. We were created with dust. Which one is more important? Eh? Precious stones and dust. If Lucifer that was great, Lucifer that was the most beautiful, that was a covering angel, if God could throw him down. What about us? Some of us, we humans, we are too proud. Too proud. Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, where is he today? Where is he? He fell. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Let us test ourselves whether we are in the Lord. Unfortunately, a lot of people who are still in secret societies, they believe, they have a false hope that they are in the Lord. If you want to swing, all those who do jagolova, you know what they call jagolova? Eh? Swing. You want to swing. And you do not test the rope very well. Some of us, we can swing on anything any man of God gives to us. They tell us, swing from here to there. I've tested the rope. You don't test it first. You just swing. And many have fallen into hell. In this world that evil is growing every day, let us call ourselves to order. No human being can stamp evil from this world again. No government, no single human being. Let's pray for our presidents, whether they are Christians, whether they are Muslims, because we don't know the level of evil in this country. Evil is too much. Except maybe we should pray that God should send that angel that went to Egypt that killed every firstborn. 
to send that kind of angel to Nigeria. Maybe that will be the solution. Because even some people have become too rich, richer than the country itself, that they are using the money to do evil. Let us pray that God will come and deliver us. But a day is coming. Me, I am not jealous of evil people because I know their destination. Those who come to church to hide in church and do all sorts of evil, how can a Christian, a communicant be boasting in church with champs? Boasting with champs. Babalawo powers. We were doing a service of songs and I made a statement. I said, some of us who are in church, we're not supposed to be in church. Our kinds of people are in Obejubele. Our type are in the shrines as Babalawo. Some of us put on religious makeup and come and hide inside the church. And do all sorts of evil. We want to control the man of God. We want to control everything. We think it is where we are chairman and uh, queens somewhere. This is the house of God. We should not make that mistake. God is calling everyone, including me, to repentance. Because many have preached like this. Some of those who preach like me are in hell. Because they fail to discipline themselves. Paul said, I beat myself and bring my body under subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself will not end up becoming a disqualified person. Are you saved? If you are here and you are using sham to tie somebody's husband down, if you do not repent, the wrath of God is coming. If you are here, you are a mother-in-law, you are a father-in-law, you are planning evil, God is coming for you. Me, I know, including me and the evil people, we will, we will all die one day. Not be where they talk, they tell they die. If not, some of us will not die since. Now God world will not be anybody world. That is the truth. Let us change from evil. Evil is too much even in the church. Let us repent. This is not our family house or family business. Let us change. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. I'm calling on all humanity, those who have not repented, those who don't know the Lord. The owner of the house is coming very, very fast. It is my prayer that God will use these words to change us the more. So that on the day of judgment, we'll not be cast away. Be on your feet. We need to pray. Don't clap, oh. Don't clap. Don't clap. Even me, I'm talking to myself. Don't clap. Let us go home and change. Let us pray. Lord, please help us. Many have risen before and they failed. Help us to be humble. Take away this spiritual pride and carnality from our hearts. Help us to pursue what is of most importance, and that is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Lord, redirect our attention to the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. The great day is coming. The great day is coming. All men shall stand before the throne of God and give a glance of himself. seat. Take your bulletin. Is it in your hand?
Can you find where the theme is written? What's the theme? Have you seen it? Our prayer point today is to pray about this theme that was expanded to us by the preacher. I will leave you with this theme and your God for the next five minutes. Those who want to go to heaven, you will have something to tell the Lord. If your business in church is not to go to heaven, then this theme is going to be a very terrible thing. Great day of the Lord. That's what the preacher told us. Fearful, terrible. It's not a day that anybody can explain. I have not witnessed it, you have not witnessed it, but let's believe the Bible. I'm just trying to ask us to think whether you are heaven focused, you want to go to heaven. If you want to go to heaven, as you are holding that bulletin, you will bow your head. You look at the thing, begin to pray. Lord, I want to make heaven. I don't want to be a cast away. I leave it to you. If you like, pray. If you don't like, that also make heaven to know why you are in church. If you are not in church to associate, just to associate, you are born and bred in the church, Anglican church, and that's why you are here. If that's a purpose, you may not understand that we are in church in order to make heaven. And God can throw anybody out. Even as you are going to pray now, your own conscience will be speaking to you whether you can make heaven or you cannot make it. Can you pray? Great day of the Lord. Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Turn it to prayer. Everybody. No, the devil is seriously at work so that you don't go to heaven. If you are foolish, if you are foolish so much that you don't know what the devil is doing, please, your attention is now drawn. That the devil's agenda is to ensure that you don't go there. He does everything possible so that you don't go there where he was cast away, where he was removed. He doesn't want you to go there. But pray, Lord, I want to go to heaven. I want to make it, oh Lord. My donations in church will not be in vain. My tithes will not be in vain. My offerings will not be in vain. Do you know? It's just one little, little thing like this. Attitude, your character, a thing that you are not able to put behind you that is eating you all spiritually, that is what the devil is, is going to hold on to. And the Lord will disown you. The Lord can disown me. My brothers and sisters, fathers in God, I hope you are talking to God. Why are you in church? Why are you in church? Do you want to go to heaven? Say it with your mouth. Say, Lord, I want to make it. Look at this area of my life. I know if I continue like this, it's going to be a disappointment to myself. Lord, help me. I want to go to heaven. Definitely, I know that there are some, certain things you are not able to handle yourself. You can, you, can, you can ask for grace. You can ask the Lord, please help me. I know this thing is wrong, but I can't just see myself coming out of it. Lord, help me out. I want to make heaven. Are you praying? Both old and young. Nobody. Nobody. God does not respect anybody who, Including the vicar who is talking to you. I've just gone to bow my knees. I'm talking to God myself. Every day I ask for grace. Nobody will take me to hell. No church member will take me to hell. My attitude will not, to things will not take me to hell. Are you still praying or you're just listening? Let me see, keep quiet, whether you will pray.
Mm. Some people don't even know what to say. They just see that nothing is wrong. I will make it. Uh, he that feels his standing, take heed. Least you fall. Haven't prayed for yourself. Can you just pray for your children if you have any? If you don't have children, just pray as the Lord will drop in your heart. Sometimes I think about myself. One day, if I'm able to make this kingdom and I go to see my father in hellfire, what do I feel? I see my son in hellfire, how do I feel? I see my, my daughter in hellfire, how do I feel? Can you pray for your children? Mothers and fathers. Are you sure your children will make a Mother prayer is very, very powerful. Father prayer is very powerful. Can you pray for your children, please? And God will hear you. We honor your prayer. Pray for your children. Maybe you want to pray for your husband. This is my husband. I know the way he's going. This is, in, this is not the way to the kingdom. I pray for my husband. Can you pray? It's about this salvation. Forget about money today. Forget about your building. Forget about the change of cars. Forget about if I, I, I want to marry, I want to wed, I want to have a baby. Just put that one aside first. Let's think about your soul. The soul of your son. The soul of your daughter. The soul of your father, your mother. Are you praying? This is the voice of salvation you have heard. And the man said, it's not a sin to clap, but he said, don't clap. It's not a sin to clap, but he said, don't clap because you don't need to clap today at all. You don't. It's just so, for this purpose now. That's why he said, you shouldn't clap. He himself cannot forget that dream of rapture that people were flying up, he couldn't fly up. A big man with plenty of bodyguards. Pick me up, I want to fly. They did all they could. But the man couldn't fly. So your money cannot give you a flight. You can book for a flight from here to anywhere part of the world. They will carry you. But the flight to this kingdom, no amount of money. <laughs> Even if you want to charter one, it will not go. <laughs> it will not go. The flight will not go. How much do you have that want to block the door of kingdom against you? How much money do you have? Your worries are blocking the door. I never get picking though. I never get picking though. God, what did I do you now? Just put that one aside first. Let's think about this soul. I never marry. I never marry. I never marry. Ah, at my age, I've not got a building of my own. Where if I go to the village? I don't have a place to stay. All of those things. I don't have a car. I used to have one. There's no car again. All of those things. This is the voice of salvation you are hearing. Save your soul now. Save your soul. Pray for your children. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your father. Pray for your mother. Pray for somebody you care about. Nobody should go to hell. Me, I don't want to go. Give me grace to follow. Give me grace to follow. Give me grace to follow.
Worshipping here for the first time, maybe you are from another denomination. Please don't mind us. We balance the gospel here. We know what is called miracle, we preach miracle. We know what is called prosperity, we preach it. But not to the detriment of our soul, we preach salvation here. The road is narrow and full of men. Jesus, Jesus, you are the way. Go with me. You are the truth. I cannot. You go are the life alone. I pursue. The, the road. The road is narrow. Can you be silent for a moment and look at how God responds to your prayer this morning? You are in His presence. Can you behold the face of your Maker and see how and feel how He responds to you? Oh. I love to worship you, my maker. We will not do all this sweating and sweating and sweating and end in hell. Thank you, Father. May the Lord attend to your voice, attend to your supplications, attend to your cry this morning. May the Lord answer you. May the Lord give you help. May the Lord help you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help all of us. The Lord will help anyone you have prayed for this morning. We shall be happy together in the presence of our Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Please rise. Please rise. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at rosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.